Have I not said I will never leave you? Have I not said I will never forsake you? Don't be weighed down, I say. For truly, those things that were of me, they may have died. Have I not said, can an old stump live? But yet if I breathe on it, it will come to life. And I tell you, yes, there are some things that I designed for you in your life that have died. But I say I am getting ready to breathe upon those things and bring them back. I am going to resurrect things that I had planned for your life, which you have thought may have been gone forever. And I say no. I say no. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. For I am doing a new thing, and I am bringing back other things that should be alive and part of your life. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Lord. 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 Sarah, you said you had the word. words. For, I'm going to have Sam read the words. She said it was actually an old song I gave her a long time ago. Yeah. And she doesn't have the uh, chords for it yet. But it, it so fits with what you've been talking about. I told her I, <laughs> I wanted her to go and get drunk and lay on the ground for a while. No, that is what I told her, but that's what she's going to do. <laughs> you know, God gave me this in 2004, and I found it today because I was sharing something with Vanessa, but it's so like today, in a way. I thought it was going to be a song, but it never evolved. But anyway... It's to all of us as people of God. Scrolls of the ancient word from the deep, hot seeking treasure, unable to speak. Seeking your face, Lord, we lift holy hands. Desperate before you, you give your command. Worship me, child. Worship, adore me. Worship me, child, in stillness before me. Assemble before you the wounded and weak. Contrite in our spirit, your virtue we seek. The armies of faithful still run in the race, washed in your mercy and covered in grace. Mm -hmm. To priests and the elders I give my command, bow down in honor, take back the land. Yes. Bow in my presence before my throne, worship the holy, bring worship alone. Armies will follow, last days are near. Throw down your crowns, let my word be clear. Fall down and worship, lift up your hands, bring me the glory, and take back the land. Yes, Lord. Lord. And that's what we're doing. We're taking back the land. Amen. Come on, show that up, kid. And if you like, you may take 10 giant steps and sit out front if you want. <laughs> sons and daughters we're going to listen and then we can have all kinds of fellowship talk eat afterwards okay all right and everybody said of course yay <laughs> <laughs> I think that's everywhere people gather <laughs> hallelujah thank you Jesus um that was pretty exciting last night. We had a lot of fun. Yes. So how many were here last night? I mean, tonight, but you weren't here last night. All right. Everybody enjoyed last night? Yes. Round two tonight. It's that way every day, right? Yes. It's fresh with the Lord every day. Amen. Because you're the body of Christ, we, we partake of Christ every day. 
by every word that comes out of his mouth. Amen. It says every word that comes out of his mouth is our meat, our drink, our food. And he's feeding us every day, isn't he? Some of the things he shows us is for the righteous. Some of the things he shows us is for the world, for the nations. You know, you never know what the Lord wants to talk about. But as the body of Christ, our assignment is in this world, right? Amen. But we also are assigned in heaven because we sit in the seat with Christ. And we rule and reign there, and we also administrate his government down here. So, um, for those that weren't here last night, I'll just quickly, shortly share what the Lord gave me for Massachusetts and um, for East, I don't know, everybody who can receive it. Um, God has been testing, um, inspecting his church, um, inspecting his body, his people, his leaders. And we can see a lot of that playing out. You know, there's a whole lot of cleaning up going on. And um, as the Yom Kippur came and, um, and passed, and we all passed under God's rod, um, there are cycles of cleansing that happens. Because cleansing brings promotion and brings maturity and graduation for a lot of the body of Christ into the next things. And God has been trying to get the church ready for the things that are now beginning. And we don't always understand at first. We are always called to follow him, to walk by faith, not by sight, not by understanding. Because if our mind tries to grab hold of what the spirit is saying, we're gonna mess it up, we're gonna get in the way. Try to help God out and then he has to clean us up again. So, um, I was caught up into heaven and I was walking on the beach in the sands of time. It's a place that I go sometimes and the Lord will take me there. And um, Bob Jones used to go there a lot too and he would pull things up out of the sand. Sometimes he would pull things up out of his garden. He'd be digging in his garden. You know, God is practical right where we are. He's not super spiritual. I mean, God can speak to us anywhere. You don't have to be in heaven to get a revelation. You just have to listen because he's in you, right? So I was there in the sands of time and I was digging and I pulled up this white schooner, which we talked about last night on the video. The live stream is on our wall. And it was pure white. And it had the name Susanna on it. And we talked about, I found one schooner in on Google that was from 1806. I don't know if it's applicable or not. I was just seeing if there was such a ship. So I don't even know if it was that was the ship. It was just a sign. So the ship, um, and Bob said to me, Bob came up in the vision and he said, oh, I see you found the ship. Bob Jones. Bob Jones. Because remember, prophets, um, God speaks to us in different parabolic ways. Yes. We look through windows, we go through elevators, all kinds of things. And so Bob was there and he said, I see you found the ship. You made it past through the shepherd's rod. In other words, God had been cleaning the body of Christ and bringing them low mm -hmm. so the church could heal, yeah. mature, and grow. That's right? And he wants us to know. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And so I said, well, what, what's this ship for, Bob? And he said, there are great waves ahead. And my people learn, need to, be, to learn to be led, not by their head, but by their spirit. And we talked about that last night. The Holy Spirit is speaking a lot to the church, but there's so many voices out there speaking and saying, this is right, this is right, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is us, you know. And everybody has their opinions, and so many are confused. The prophetic word shouldn't be all over the gamut and confusing the church. 
And so he said, I'm speaking, but so many are running and following men. They're not following me. And they're in danger of crashing yep. on the rocks of adversity. Right. And Daniel 7, 2 said that the main two waves that are going to shake the earth in this time is the political and social agitations. Isn't that true? Yes. So we can't, we have to be careful not to be influenced by politics and social media, uh, media, social, you know. Mm -hmm. We have to follow the Holy Spirit. We have to learn to rest, learn to get quiet, deal with stress, and learn to drop down in your spirit so that you can hear it. The ship, I saw it was sailing in mountainous waves. I mean, those waves look like mountains. They were huge, it was way out in the deep ocean. But I saw this ship had no trouble navigating. It found a narrow strip between the mountainous waves and there was no turbulence in that strip. And I said, what is that place the ship is sailing through? And Bob said, oh, that's divine grace. Now I've talked about grace and great grace because I've met both of those angels. But divine grace is another level of the operation of the spirit. And I gave you the two scriptures last night. 1 Corinthians 1, 7 and 1 Corinthians 12, 4 in the Amplified Classic Version. Talks about God's grace operating. But it's the power of divine grace that operates in that place where he ministers to his body and his people by the power of divine grace. And some of it was operating last night because a lot of people got free and healed. Amen. So anyways, I'm not going to repeat all that. So today, uh, Pat and I crashed and burned. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we slept. Um, it was great that lasagna I ate last night and I ate his today. <laughs> that was really good. She's a good cook. You gotta keep her. That's right. We have an arrangement. She cooks and I eat. That's good. <laughs> it's a good deal. So I'm gonna tell you what I saw coming here. It was really interesting because yes. I never saw it before. Yep. But it makes sense it because of the message he's given us for this hour and where we're headed. Yep. It will not be turbulent for the body of Christ that hears his voice. But it will be turbulent for those that are caught up in fear drama, all the stuff, right? Mm -hmm. The agitations. As we were driving here, um, I drove, and uh, I began to see fog rolling in off the ocean, yep. in the spirit. Yep. Not in the natural, in the spirit. And it was really thick. And it was rolling in as I was driving, and this big fog horn began to sound. It began to sound loudly, and fog horns, um, release warning to ships yep. when the weather changes that there's obstructions ahead. Be careful. Be spirit-led, right? So, um, I wanted to read you that. Whoops, I took a picture of it. Let me get that. A foghorn or a fog signal is a device that uses sound to warn vehicles of navigational hazards such as rocky coastlines or boats in the presence of other vessels in foggy conditions. The term is most often used in relationship to maritime or marine transport. When visual navigation aids such as lighthouses are obscured, mm -hmm. foghorns provide an audible warning of rocky outcrops, shoals, headlands, and other dangers to shipping. Now remember, part of the message was Ships are leaderships, they're vessels, right? Yes. But it's not just fivefold ministry, you're all leaders. You're all <coughs> spiritual vehicles that the Holy Spirit operates through. Amen. And we can't navigate according to the opinions of this world. Mm. We navigate according to the one who speaks to us Amen. and read his words. Amen. And we follow them, right? Not men. But it said that this fog, it sounds to warn 
view of other vehicles around you that might not be listening to God. That might crash into you because they're not hearing. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a warning of danger. It's a warning of clarity that not everybody is hearing what you hear, but watch out for that. Because we are to lead people into the light, but not everybody hears right. And we have to, with patience, begin to model the clarity that God wants to bring to help people, right? To lead them. And so it's also when the lighthouses are obscured. Yep. Now, the with the dismantling and cleaning up, I would call it, of many houses of prayer, which I call lighthouses, mm -hmm. prayer towers, houses of worship, houses of truth, you know. We are to be lighthouses to men. When they get obscured by fog, then God gets louder and says, listen to me. When, when there is a deep cleaning in the church and God lowers some down for a while, we have to go under the rod, and those that go under in that time and walk in humility and allow God to do the corrections, they're the new leaders that move on into the new. But if we resist God's corrections, we won't be able to go where others are going because we didn't pass the test. We talked about that last thing. Okay, so the fog rolling in and the fog horns sounding as I was driving here again is another warning to the church don't be led by the content of men opinions political and social voices upheavals agitations get into his rest his presence and listen to you get clarity follow him because the ships that are following him are setting sail out into the deep right. things of god because God wants the church to get beyond the elementary things Amen. and begin to grow up into the deeper things of the word and the spirit, right? Amen. All right, so I looked up to this scripture here, which is interesting take on this. Psalm 48. No, 148, I'm sorry. 148. That's what I get for trying to do it with one finger. 148 starts about the boast about the whole chapter is about the supremacy of God over all things. 148. 148. And over the earth, over creation, sound, light, animals, water, everything, right? Nations. He talks about in verse 8, or let's go to 7. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all the deeps. You lightning, hail, fog, frost, stormy wind are all fulfilling his orders. You know, if man don't listen to his voice, creation will be an expression mm -hmm. of what God's trying to tell you. Yeah. And if we don't listen, we get a harder lesson. Yeah. Creation is going to throw out everything that's hidden and buried deep and that's wicked. We're going to see a lot of things spewed out that men have tried to cover up. And the church, too. And the church, right? But it says, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers and judges of the earth, both men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise and exalt the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted, supreme, and his glory and majesty are above earth and heaven. Verse 14, interesting. He has lifted up a horn yes. for his people, Amen. giving them power, prosperity, dignity, and preeminence. Amen. Now we know that horn is Christ. Amen. But in this context of yes. the fog and the oh, horn, and he said, I'm leading you by my voice. You're going to be fine. Amen. If you follow me, I will take care of you. I will provide, right? Yep. I will give you power, prosperity, dignity, and preeminence. 
a song of praise for all his godly ones, for the people of Israel that are near to him. So in the midst of it, that was in the midst of your poem you read. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So in the midst of it, even though there's a warning, if we're listening, we're safe because we're following that narrow path in this hour. The nations, we think the nations are shaking right now. God's just getting started. <laughs> Number one, because people are hard-hearted. And I'm not talking about just unsaved. I'm talking about people, born again or not. Sometimes our hearts of flesh can't understand the hearts of the spirit. Right. Romans 7 and Romans 8 talks about the battle between us being in our head and being spirit-led in Romans 8. So you want to talk about that Bible and the hurricane? And the, in the hurricane uh, that hit North Carolina up in the mountains, they found a Bible in the mud that had survived. I put the picture on my Facebook wall, and it was open to Romans 7 and 8. Because wow. <laughs> I zoomed in on it, and yep. I tried to get it clear. Yep. Because, see, we're in a war, yep. but most people are caught up in the waves of adversity of political and social agitation, like, mm. like Daniel 7, 2 says. Yep. And they're not walking in the spirit because we follow people rather than following God. That's right. And so he's putting a, a fog out there, a foghorn. He's saying, once Yom Kippur and everyone passed under the rod, now begins the next cycle, because these feasts are cycles. They're cycles, they're windows. And there's a narrow path now. But if you follow the spirit, you'll be okay. You will navigate safely through it. But you are not to let your heart and mind be troubled. If we know we are walking with Christ, do we fear? Nope. No. He said, don't fear. I'm near. I'm here. Yes, Lord. He said two words, follow me. He never said this life would be easy. He said, in your life, you're going to have wars. You're going to have troubles, earthquakes, yep. all kinds of stuff, persecution. You're going to have all kinds of hardships. They're cycles. We are in a cycle, a wartime cycle. Now, I told you that last night that before we left to come here, I was laying in bed waiting on the Lord for a message for what he wanted to do. And I saw myself in the vision. <laughs> And I don't know where I was because I didn't get clear the whole panorama. It was like a little peak of a vision. I was by a stone. I don't know if it was a bridge or a road or what it was. And there was sun shining out and I was standing there and the wind was blowing. It was a nice day. I want to go camping already. <laughs> and uh, I saw myself sit down on the ground. And then I saw myself lay down on the ground. I thought, what am I doing? And I had a pillow and I laid my head on the pillow. I said, oh, you know, even Jesus, when he was in the boat in the big storm and the waves on the sea, he laid safely in peace in the turbulence, sleeping in God's presence because his father controlled Jesus' walk. He led him. Jesus followed the father. Now, the, the staff freaked out. What are you doing? We're dying. Save us. He wakes up. What's going on? Where's your faith? You're going to be all right. Speak to it. Of course, it was a lesson. Everything Jesus did was lessons. He was teaching them by illustration. And that's what prophets do. We give you illustrations to release principles and parables of truth that we're to understand. Now, the last thing I wanted to share, Pat so, wanted so, me... So, what, what was happening when you laid down? You have to know, Pat's like Mr. Rubik's Cube. He has a photographic <laughs> memory. I to get to the point. He has a photographic memory, and he can remember every single thing, where it's at, where it fits, what the date was, color, time, and everything. So I see things, he tells me where it fits. And if I forget things, he says, don't forget about that. 
<laughs> so what am I supposed to remember? What was happening when you laid down? The wind. To the wind, baby. The wind. In the face. In your vision, what was happening? Well, it was the winds of change. That's right. But you... We are in. The, we have been. Now listen. We have been. For the last few decades, we have been in the season of the winds of change. It's said, a cycle. You said wind was blowing on you. The wind. I said that. No, you didn't. Not tonight. I said the wind was blowing. No, you didn't. Not tonight. Yeah. No, you didn't. I was standing in the wind on a sunny day. The wind was blowing, and then I sat down and I laid down. I said that. But tonight you didn't. You're high witnesses. <laughs> I said that. I said it was when the wind was blowing. It was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. So, anyways, Pat and I flow back and forth all the time. It's all right. Um. But the, uh, last night you mentioned that the feathers were prayers. Yes. 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 The pillow represents prayer because he said every prayer is like a feather that you release. And when Jesus has enough prayer to answer that prayer, when he gets enough prayer, he will put it in a pillow and lay his head on it and listen. Because sometimes we pray what we want and what we think and what we feel because we get burdened by, by the stuff. And he said, don't carry that. It's not your burden. Mm -hmm. And the intercessors are the greatest uh, carriers of burdens of this world and they should not be because because your feelings and uh, the lord wants people he said don't carry things that you're not called to mm. he said you're called to agree with me and pray with me but i'm the one that carries those burdens because you got to remember they are spiritual but they're also natural and jesus defeated that on the cross so we can't pick these things back up have we ever accomplished anything by being stressed and worn out? Have we? No, we actually got deeper in the mud, didn't we? He said, I'm lifting you up now so you won't keep getting bogged down in circumstances. He said, I want you to go above, go higher. I want you to enter my rest. I want you to stay out of stress. I want you to sit in my seat with me. There's no fear in heaven. There's no worry. There's no stress. The only burden that we carry is the burden of the word of the Lord when it comes to us to move us to do something, right? Yeah. All right. So the winds of change have cycle of the operation of the Holy Spirit has been in the earth for a few decades now. And an angel whirlwind came one time and he says, I work with the angel whirlwind, but what he doesn't finish, I come behind it and I complete the task. Because every angel has an assignment. There are stages of release. We can't, we can't handle the full way of the glory if we're not ready for kindergarten first. Or, or middle school or junior high or high school or college or university. Sometimes even then we're not ready. But he said, you're ready now. And the last time I met Bob in heaven before this, um, I talked about getting the sapphire key, which is a tribe of Issachar to know times and seasons, right? Going through the gate. And he said, turn, look behind you, Sue. And I looked behind me. There was this massive wave, tsunami wave of the spirit. And it was so full of power and body parts and activity and lightning and thunder and everything. It was huge. But I wanted, I wanted to say this to you. Bob said this has been stopped twice in the earth. As it started to move, it was killed twice. Who kills the waves of God? Hmm? People do. Because we limit God, we tell him how we want it, when we want it, and if we don't like it, we don't we reject it. Satan does because he inspires people to kill it. The first thing we do when God starts moving really strong is we shut it down. If it's not the way we want it. So, anyways, this is a small version. The point I'm making is he said this has been stopped. 
two times in the earth when it started going and then God pulled it back. He said, this one's coming and it will not be stopped now. Amen. But you're going to have to navigate by the Holy Spirit because the work and operation of the weight of the full way of the glory is going to bring upheaval in the earth. Because the enemy will fight it tooth and nail, and so will religion. That's the way everything is stirred up. But if Father's in it, and you're sailing through the waves of the Spirit, keep going. You don't have to understand it as it's coming, because guess what? You never will. You might as well chill out. <laughs> you're on the scenic route. You'll figure it out later when you look back and see what he did in spite of you. Mm. <laughs> no, this is true. I know. A lot of times we get in the way. So the Lord gave me this prophecy. I posted it on my wall before I came. I want to read it to you because this is the description of where we're going. It was a declaration, a, a prophetic declaration. Because... Heaven is coming into time, and God moves. God created time for fallen man, but He can move. He can hasten time or delay time. He can lengthen it out or compress it according to His plans, because He created it for fallen when we fell. Men were eternal before we fell, mm -hmm. but we that are full of the Holy Spirit are not limited to time. And so we have to realize you can move outside of time already because your spirit is eternal already. The, the kingdom of God is within you. Okay, so I wrote it. I said, thank you for your holy presence, Jesus. We thank you for the winds of change. We thank you, Lord, for the divine exchange. You are here to rearrange. Hallelujah. That's a good Amen. You are here, Father, and you are blowing through our lives. You are blowing through our homes. You can, it's on my wall. You don't take notes. You can just read it on my wall. You're blowing through our homes. You're blowing through our streets. You're blowing through our cities, through our nations. You are blowing with divine visitation. Yes. Glory, war and glory come side by side, guys. Because the glory brings war. Because the darkness is in such turmoil and terror and pain because of the glory in the earth. Hallelujah. That's why everything is, is going to turn inside out, but you're fine. Why? Because you carry the glory. Amen. You're blowing with heavenly revelation. You're blowing the winds of change, and you're blowing stronger, and your effects are going to last longer. We embrace you in the winds, because these winds are the ones you send. You are lifting us out of where we have been into your higher heavenly winds. And though we don't understand it right now, we will look back later and we will, Lord. We will look back and we will understand what you were doing with your hand as you unveil your plan and as you work out your plan with your hand in our land, in every land. The Lord likes to rain. <laughs> We will see the wisdom that you used. Even in the midst of adversity, we will see your wisdom. Mm -hmm. Though you hid it from us at first, and you caused us to hunger and thirst. Seems like we're reading prophetic things to me. Mm -hmm. We look back and see how wise you were and how gloriously you changed us all in it all. We give you praise, honor, and glory. We give you praise, honor, and glory. We give you praise, honor, and glory. For you alone know what needs to be done. And the winds will blow through your son. So we say, Father, you have only begun. You have only just begun. So we put our full trust in the son. And we say, Father, have your way. Blow us here. Blow us there. Blow yes, us Lord. everywhere. Yep. Until you accomplish your full plan. Even if we don't understand we will stand and see your salvation that you unfold with your hand according to your plan and we will give you thanks to it all because you are the Lord, you are the King, you are the one and you called us to be like your son. 
So, Father, let your winds increase. Come and blow everywhere and catch us up across the earth to finish the purposes of our birth. For we are your sons and daughters of great worth, and you will be glorified in the earth. The winds of change will blow here and it will blow there and it will blow everywhere. Amen. Biggest reason is because of the prayer. Because he has enough in the pillow. And he's laying his head on our breast now to listen. What can he do with a people that are fully given to him? Anything he wants. What can he do with the people that have prayed it through? Anything he's planned. Because once we pray it through in agreement with him, that frees him up to begin. The season that we've been in is done. We're on a new season and you're not going to understand because it's going to get turbulent. But you already have set your sails into the wind like that schooner. And you follow, you navigate by his voice. He said, my sheep hear my voice. They will not follow another. They will hear a sound saying, turn left, turn right. Don't say that. Don't do that. Don't think that. Go here. Go there. Don't go anywhere. Stay home. Okay. You will hear him navigate you this year. Don't try to interpret it. Let him interpret it. When I get something, I always ask the Holy Spirit, what's the interpretation of what you just gave me? Be careful of using dream dictionaries, vision dictionaries, and you know all these things, books. They're good for a point, but if the Holy Spirit speaks to you in your own specific prophetic language, then he also knows what symbols he's showing you that you will understand, and he'll tell you what it means for you. But someone else won't know what it means for you because God speaks to you each uniquely. So we have to be careful that we get it from him. And then when we get together, everybody shares their part and we put it together to get his heart. Right? So he said it's time to rest in the wind. Political and social agitations is a sign of this cycle in this generation. But remember, the church has been on the earth for thousands of years. People. God has always had a people in the earth. And we are still here. And he still uses people for his purpose. So don't write people off. God knows how to use them. Yeah. He'll use the wicked and the righteous for his purpose. That's right. So don't look at a man, listen for God's plan. He might use a wicked person for his purpose. He actually does. And he uses righteous. Because God knows whose heart he can turn and navigate them so they finish what he wants. And so the winds are blowing. I was driving, the fog started coming in. There's a fog about to be released in America. Because I told you about the window washers last night. One's trying to give us sight, and the other one's trying to cloud up our vision. So we won't know what to do, right? But Jesus is going to dump the revelation of his spirit, that bucket of water on it, to get it clear. So we have no excuse saying, well, I didn't know. I don't know what choice to make. Sure you do. You just don't like it. <laughs> Usually it's something we don't like, right? So we'll kind of balk at it. Now... The foghorn, when the lighthouses get dim, because the fog is too thick, then the foghorns sound. And to warn us of people that might be in their ship on the sea that are not paying attention, they might be too close to you or to each other or to the rocks, he says, be alert, be ready, not everybody's listening. But if you will listen, and lead, you can lead many through the fog in a safe path, and you won't crash on the shipwreck in your faith on the rocks of adversity. The scripture says many fall, their faith falls shipwreck 
on the rocks of adversity. And so, in the turbulence, it's God, because he's waking America up. And not just America, he's waking every nation up, because the nations are going to realign according to the end time harvest design. Nations are trying to jostle each other for to get in their lineup, but you know what? God's got a hand in that too. It's not going to happen the way we think, but it'll happen the way he's planned. So the one thing we have to learn to do is follow him and trust each other as we all follow him, that we all follow together because you're more powerful together than you are alone. Okay, so Pat's going to give you what he's percolating on. <laughs> Can I move this up, Bob? Sure. Yeah, just put your foot on it and pull it up. Oh, that one doesn't go pull up or push down? Oh. Okay. Or you just kind of push down and pull it. Okay. Oh, is that good? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. It's on the cloud, isn't it? But Bob Jones um, was at our church four times, and, and he um, taught Cat a lot. So he was part of our spiritual father, kind of. He's in your dreams. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah because for. prophets mentor prophets. And so a lot of our training comes from the prophets that went before us as a child. But sometimes the Lord comes in the form of people. Yes. The Holy Spirit does too. So it could be the Lord speaking to you in the form of somebody you know so that you'll pay attention. So the dream is more significant when he's in it? Or? I pay attention when he is. Okay. That's mm -hmm. <laughs> good. <laughs> yes. I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Now. In a little while I might sit because I got a lot to share tonight, but this is, I wanted to tell you that the Lord opened this up to me beginning the other day. And then this morning, he got me up and the Revelation realm opened up so incredibly, it totally shocked me. I was like, Lord, this is so incredible how we put everything together with Sue, what Sue talked about last night. And that's why I wanted her to share about her experience with the wind and the prophecy about the winds of change. And you'll more understand as we go into the revelation tonight. So we got a lot of places to get to. Now, our brother here, Pastor Bob, when I first came, the first time I came, Bob and I really were relating in the spirit and then Bob shared, I had a prophetic word that the same prophet Bob Jones had given. And I didn't know, but I said it to Bob. And then Bob said, I was in that meeting and I saw what Bob prophesied. Right. Oh, yes, yeah. And that was in the outpouring in Lakeland with Todd Bentley right, right. in 2008. Now, this is important this year because now what Sue doesn't know, but I love the Holy Spirit. She just read you the prophetic word that she spoke that Friday night about winds of change, about the divine exchange coming to rearrange. Okay? But I want you to, and then you, but I want you to read again one section of the prophecy. And then I'm going to read you the prophecy the Lord spoke to Bob in 2008 when Bob, this Bob was there with him in Todd Bentley. And it's the same prophecy. Because this is the fulfillment. Yeah! from 16 years ago what's going on now but this is how exact God is that's a sign when you know it's God because it will always be exact because God foreknows he is the end he's not the end is an event it's him he's the beginning he's the ending that's how he can foreknow and everything and go see and when you're in God not only can God take you into the future God can take you into the past because he's the past. He's the beginning. See, it's not, a, it's not a thing. It's God himself. Amen. I've been in dreams in the past. God took me in the past in dreams. Yeah. 
Now, I'm going to tell you one example of this that I have to one of the brothers you might know of. His name, he's a prophetic apostolic brother named Gary Beaton. Yeah. And Gary came to our church one time and he told us that one time he had a dream and he was taken into the past and he was taken in the dream to the day of Abraham Lincoln. And he would, and in the dream, he was one of the people that went and warned Abraham Lincoln that he was about to be assassinated. He was literally there in the dream because God took him there. And we know he was assassinated, but he was sent to, he was one of the people sent in his dream to warn the president. And we know he didn't listen. And different ones were, we know, and then after were sent to him. He didn't listen to them. And he got, he got assassinated. But that's an example. God can take you in the past. Mm -hmm. I've had the Lord do that to me a few times. And now, here's the prophecy the Lord said to Sue, just read to you. Here it is. It was, Lord, Father, blow us here, blow us there, blow us everywhere. Right? Now here's the prophecy from Bob Jones in 2008. Now, what was the subject here? What was blowing? Winds of change, right? Yeah. Now here's the prophecy from Bob in 2008 in that meeting where Bob was there. Winds of change, it blows here, it blows there, it blows everywhere. <laughs> it just blew in here, you can feel that. <laughs> it's the same word. <laughs> but this is 16 years ago. But see, when prophets say a word in God's timing, they're fulfilled. They're cycles. So this is what's happening right now in the spirit realm. Mm. But see, the winds of change are blowing here, they're blowing there, and they're blowing everywhere. Now in 2008, the Lord said through Bob Jones, his prophet, there at Lakeland, he said that God told him that in 2008, was a new beginning and that the winds of change was beginning to blow and it would go worldwide okay that was what god prophesied in that meeting in 2008 okay so that's important so this is a worldwide blowing of the winds of change it's not just for here that's why it said blow here blow there blow everywhere but the whole world. God's working. Okay. So this is a worldwide thing God's doing, even with the ship. Shaking the whole world. As we understand, as we go into this tonight. So I wanted to begin there because the Lord said that he began, and notice tonight, what did the Lord say to Bob a few minutes a while ago? He said, what? Tonight's a new beginning. Did you hear that? Now what else did he prophesy tonight? This goes with my message. That's why I love being with my brother here because since the beginning we're always in the spirit. Yes, together. See, that's what you want. You want to be, see, people that are the true body of Christ will hear the same thing the spirit is saying to the churches. Amen. He's part of the church, I'm part of the church, Sharon's part of the church, my wife's part of the church, you're part of the church. We, should. we all hear the same thing from the spirit because he's in all of us. We should. Right? Yeah. yeah. So that's important that you know that the people that you're with, that not only are you walking and living in the Spirit, so are they. Yes, yes, amen. See, that's who you can trust. Those that are what? Sue said, Romans 7 and 8, those that are in the flesh, don't listen to them. Mm -hmm. Listen to those that are in the Spirit. Romans yeah, 7 and 8. Yeah, right. That was the warning in the hurricane. See, the Bible, Sue said it. God gives signs. Yes, yeah. Now, here's the thing. What is a hurricane? Strong wind. Right? Strong winds. See, winds of change. Okay. Now we're, see, tonight we're on a prophetic journey. Okay? We're on a prophetic journey tonight. Romans chapter 7 and 8, where the Bible is open to. And that it talks about being led by those that are in their head, head and the, or in the flesh, and those that are in their spirit, yeah. the spirit of God. Yeah. Okay? 
now. Yeah. Here's another thing. Now, you know that Sue mentioned this last night, so if you weren't here last night, even if you were, go back and that message last night, because this goes with tonight, goes, it continues to flow. It's one message, both, both nights. Mm -hmm. Now, last night, Sue talked about that one of the time, former times we were here, might have been last time we were here, that the, we, we talked about God's lighthouse. Mm -hmm. That you are a lighthouse here. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now here's the prophecy that we gave last time we were here on the lighthouse. Oh yeah, we did. That same prophet Bob Jones said this. Sue mentioned about the lighthouse a few minutes ago. Bob said, I was told that this outpouring will produce repentance leading to true godly righteousness producing power evangelism. The Lord said he wants to restore the lighthouse yeah. to our nation. Yeah. Bringing a sanctifying light to who? The leaderships. See, again, what Sue was talking about last night, see the leaderships, the ship, the schooner, the leaderships. Okay? So the lighthouse will help them not to crash on the rocks. Yes, Lord. Lord said. Lord said, this is actually an invitation or opportunity to the church in our nation to, re to receive the restoration of this lighthouse. Yep. And this lighthouse will produce a great light, so we talked about that Friday night in our church, that will begin a move of God that will eventually cover this entire nation. Yeah. And then it will go to the whole world. So that was from our last time here. This is from the message last time we were yeah. here, or one of the last times. Okay? Uh -huh. Now, now, that same prophet Bob Jones, the Lord gave him these words. That's why, see, when, when she was caught up to heaven, she saw that prophet in the cloud of witnesses, which is scriptural because, what, Moses and Elijah appeared to Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration, didn't they? They were, the, they were part of the cloud of witnesses. Yeah. See, this is scriptural. We get caught up. See, to see the cloud of witness. Now, Jesus was on earth then. See, Sue was in heaven. That's where the, what? Those when people that died are in heaven. Right. See? The cloud of witnesses are in heaven. That's where she was taken, and he's there among the cloud. Now, it's important that you understand Rome, Hebrews 11 and 12 talks about all those that were great in faith. Hebrews 11. Okay? The elders, it calls them. But then it says, and it switches to chapter 12, but in the original manuscript, there's no chapters. Okay? So it's all one message. 11 and 12 are one. Okay? But at the end of 11, Hebrews 11, it says, what? That these are all witnesses of faith. But then it says, but they are not made perfect without us. One church. Okay? So see, they're in heaven... But it says, but they need us, and when we're together, we're made perfect. Amen. Okay? Mm -hmm. But then it says, we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Yes. See, Bob was in, is one of those people in that cloud of witnesses. Okay? So we're just giving you a scripture to what we're talking about here. Okay? So that's why a lot of the reason that Sue saw Bob is because God knew this message to you had to do with former prophecies that he prophesied because they were being fulfilled. Now, the last word that Bob gave, I'm not going to go into it during the time, but the night before Bob physically died, mm -hmm. some of you heard this, some of you not, this might shake you up, but, yeah, yeah. but the night before Bob, he was a prophet, such a high-level prophet, and what actually happened is the night he was in the hospital, his leg, physical legs were broken. He, he could not physically get out of his bed. He was, he was about, he was dying. Okay, this is literally dying in the hospital. Okay, what happens is that night, now his wife is there at his bedside, okay, yeah. physically. She's there the whole night, and then she's there when he died, okay? So she's looking at him, you know, like holding his hand, supporting him, because he's dying, literally. Mm -hmm. But what happened is his spirit came out of his body yeah. in the hospital the Lord took him. and walked, he walked down the, the hallway, left his room, literally this happened, 
and he went to the the guard because that weekend there was a huge snowstorm in the Carolinas, and when they get snow, they're pro they can't do nothing. They don't have plows like us up here. They don't get snowstorms. You know what I mean? Hardly ever. So when they get a storm like that, everything shuts down. Everything shut down. No one could go to the hospital. No one could leave. And this was the whole weekend because there was so much snow. So the guard, and he was a believer, a Christian. He was a Baptist, but he was a believer. And he knew that Bob was, was a prophet, but he, he literally stayed away from him because he was kind of afraid of him. It's a true story. He said this after him. Because he, he was a Baptist, so he really didn't believe in the gifts and those things. And, but he was a believer. So he's there, and it's 3 in the morning. Bob, like I said, he leaves his body. He walks down the hallway. But it's his spirit, okay? But his spirit looked like him. Your spirit looks like you. Because it's your spirit, it's you. It's a real you. And, and remember, now here's the thing that's interesting about this. Now, he, when he came out of his body, he had on, still had on a... He had a white garment, a hot boy, a hospital garment. That's what he had on, his spirit. Okay, but there was a reason for that because in '84 we talked about last night. Todd Bentley had the experience in '84. I told you would dream with Bob and Jesus in the car. He, yes, he, yes. Remember I told it last night. Well, in that year, 1984, Bob Jones had a vision of himself, like Sue had a vision of herself. Yeah. And in his vision of himself, he saw the future, and he saw that. The day would come where he would be in a hospital gown. And things would happen, and he was in the hospital gown. This is in his vision. Okay? So he knew that at the end of his life, he would be in the hospital gown and die. Yeah. So it was a prop, part of the prophecy. So this was part of the prophecy of this. So what happened is his spirit man, he walks down the hallway, he goes to that guard, and the guard was in there sleeping on the sofa in his office because he couldn't leave because it's a snowstorm. No one can leave the hospital. And he, and he hears beep, 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 beep. He hears this noise. And it's the lock. You know, the, the doors have locks. That, you know when you push the no, numbers and they light up on that little thing? The keypad. The keypad. He hears the keypad. Beep, 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 beep. Because you go into his office, you can't get in his office unless you know the combination. But the prophet knew it. He, he pushed it and got in. And, he, and the door opens up and it's Bob walking in his office. But he doesn't know it's Bob's spirit, man. He thinks it's Bob. And Bob says to him, get a pad, brother. Because he was a brother in Christ. So he gets the pad. He says, write these prophecies down. I'm about to go home. I'm about to die. And I, got, I, haven't, I, haven't, finished my, I haven't finished my call yet. So, so I got these prophecies. I got to give it. He says, write this one down. Give it to Rick Jordan. Write this one down. Give it to Bobby Tanner. Write this one down. Give it to Steve Thompson. And then he said, then, he, then the, the guard said that suddenly he wrote them down. And then he said, I... The power, he didn't know, because remember, he's a Baptist. He doesn't have the experience. But he said, all of a sudden, I, it's like I passed out, he said. <laughs> and, I, and, he, and, he's laying, and he's laying on his desk like this, asleep. Like that, and then he was out. And, and, he, and in, in the morning, now remember, this is 3 or 4 in the morning, okay, when this happens. In the morning, he suddenly get, wakes up from that, whatever happened to him. And, he's, and he, he takes his head off his desk, and he sees the papers that he wrote. Now remember, he thought Bob was there. He didn't know it was his spirit. He didn't, you know. So he sees the physical papers he wrote down the prophecy, but he says, I see a fourth paper. Uh, and on this fourth paper was writing that was in another language. Uh, and the, uh, so now he finds out, he gets up that morning, and then he found out, and he, and he talked to somebody, and he said, I had this strange thing happen to me last night. He said, that, that man in that room that, you know, that he's in the hospital here, Bob Jones. He said he came in my office. He said, I don't know how he knew the combination, but he knew the combination. He came in. He told me that said this to me. I wrote these things down, and I think he went up to the room, and no one was in the room because Bob had died. Then by the morning he was dead. So he finds that out. That shocks him. And then it, then he talks to his wife, and the wife says, uh, he says he tells her what happened. She says, uh, well, she believed it because she knew he was a prophet. But she says, uh, I'm, let me tell you something. She said, I was here all night. Bob never left his, his, uh, his I was with him physically. He never left his bed. No, his spirit did. So, but he said, this happened to me. He said, here's the notes. And he gives us, here's the prophecies. You know, and then Rick joined. And this got out all over, you know, at the time when it happened, 2014. Some of you might have heard about this. But the reason I bring it up is because 
we were involved in the interpretation of that message. Sue and I were part of the word, like a, it was like eight of us. Jeff Jansen was part of that too. We were all we were called together with Gary Beaton because Gary had the actual note, right. and he gave it to a brother that we you know at Worship Warnings down named Michael Fickus. And Michael, God, Michael knows a lot of uh, languages, and he when he saw the note because the Lord told Gary give him, he blew the note up. The note was on a, one of those little uh, sticky, uh, note. sticky note pads, yeah. so it was very small. Okay, so what Gary did is he took it to a, a duplication place and they blew it up like on a huge machine, became like this big. Okay, so you could really see the Michael, the writing. Michael, and and the Lord says now it was it was we were doing a conference down there with Bonnie and then we did our own conference at Morningstar in 2018 in August. And the Lord told Gary he said now blow he said that blown up one he said it was Michael Pickens's birthday during that conference or whatever. And the Lord said to Gary now give him that huge copy of the paper as a gift for his birthday. Wow. So he gave it to get to Michael. When Michael saw it, he says, hey, I recognize that language. And then the Lord actually opened it up and he was able to interpret it. Wow. Now, but the reason I bring this up is because that message, the last message the Lord gave to Bob, through Bob, was now either the Lord or an angel wrote that note yeah. or bob but it was Bob's spirit what because Bob, because the guy's name was don don said i didn't write it no more i don't even know that language how can i write it mm -hmm. but it's on it's a paper on there so either the, bob is the as a spirit or an angel or G, lord himself wrote that note okay so it's, in other words this one happened either way so we get we we're involved with the interpretation of it we go down, we meet with Michael Fickus, we met with Gary, we met with Bonnie, and uh, Jeff, Jan Jeff Jansen was part of another prophet we're involved with. And the interpretation comes out, and in the interpretation, here was the part of the interpretation, the Lord, Bob said, I'm about to go home. And I'm limited in what I can say because I'm about to leave. But he said, I, he said, there are still things that I did not accomplish of my prophecies. This is in the, 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 but the interpretation. He says, I'm going, but he said, there are still some prophecies on my shelf. And God will raise up other holy prophets and they will finish what I, my call, what was left on my shelf. That's the way the, 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 the note put it. But I bring that up because, like I said, we're, things we're talking about that prophet tonight and Sue saw him in heaven, but because again, see, when he gets these prophecies, even when he, the last word he gave me when he wrote home is he said, there's things that I didn't see fulfilled. I, why, you know, I, but they will be fulfilled by other prophets. And Sue and I, as you know, we're both we're called to be prophets. And, and like Sue said, see, I knew Bob. I worked with Bob. Bob came to our church four times, you know, over the years. And so, you know, and so I just wanted to share that because it's part of the understanding of what we're going to go into tonight. Okay, now, so going back, we were in 2008. My brother was in that meeting with with Todd Bentley and Bob Jones in the fulfillment of that prophecy that Bob gave, and they're in Lakeland in 2008. Now, eight years before that, that the same angel first appeared to Bob Jones in the year 2000. And he said different things to him. And we're, we're going to go into some tonight. Because part of this has to do with your region. Amen. Okay? That we're going to talk about tonight. Of the this Massachusetts state. Yeah. And, and former moves that have happened here. Now if you notice, see no one... Now Bob, he'll tell you, he didn't know my message tonight. But you notice what he said during the prophecy before I got up. And Sue got up. What was the prophecy? There are things that have died. But they were of God, but they're going to be resurrected. That's right. Things that have died are coming back around. They're going to come and they're going to be resurrected. And the Lord said, There are things that are of me, but they've died, but I'm going to bring them back. Amen. Right? That's what the Lord said. Now, this had this no, he didn't know, but see the message that I'm going to be speaking tonight is former moves of God that have been in your state. That ended. They ended early, yeah. so they died. Yeah. 
the moves died, but God says, I'm resurrecting them, I'm bringing them back. And the Lord said, they, in the prophecy, he said they're in seed form. But I'm going to give life to the seeds again. All former moves that have happened here. Now this is this goes back to the year 1746 in Massachusetts. The first great awakening season. And the man that the leader, one of the leaderships, the leader that lived and was part of here in your state named Jonathan Edwards. In the first great awakening of our nation and the whole, it was a worldwide awakening called the First Great Awakening, 1746. Okay, Jonathan Edwards. All right. Now, when Bob had the original experience with that angel, Winds of Change, the angel said then when he appeared to him, he said, I want you to go to a certain state to minister that had a former move. Because God's going to restore it. Okay? Now this angel said, I was involved in that former move. And now it's to be restored, so I've been sent back. Because it didn't fulfill what it was supposed to. Is that the Lord was saying? See, it's died, but it's coming back. See? Same thing. Okay? Now here's what the angel also said. Listen to this. The angel said to Bob that he is bringing churches together and their leaderships. Okay. The Lord is desiring to join together different works of his church in the bond of unity. Last night you talked about the unity. Remember Psalm 133? We're in room 133. Unity of the brethren. Okay. This huge messenger, listen, stipulated that this angel has now been released to bring the winds of change to the church, aiding us in the transitionary imminent the transition imminently ahead. These winds are going to fill the sails of the church to transport her on this virtuous journey. She saw the ship, didn't she? The schooner. Sails, see? But remember, this is a word Lord gave, this angel said to Bob, years ago, and Susan was talking about winds of change last night. Mm. This is the original prophetic word after Bob, the angel came to Bob here. Okay, So understand mm. that what Sue said last night, we're getting more understanding of tonight. Right. Okay? But remember the prophecy. Winds of change come to rearrange and bring a divine exchange to you. So this affects your finances. Now I've had three signs since we drove here. God gives us signs as prophets. To give that signs confirm the word. I've had three signs financially for you, Lord gave me. The, uh, the first sign is I, the Spirit fell on me when the clock turned to 111, which is Deuteronomy 111, the thousandfold, on your giving. So God's going to give you a thousand times what you give. What you've been giving, he's going to give you a thousand times that as he returns. You're going to, you sowed that, now you're going to reap it. Because he measured, not, not 30, 60, 100 fold, 1,000 fold. Because he's measuring the level of the waters a thousand times. But the prophecy said the winds of change is going to bring the divine exchange and rearrange things financially for you, okay? Now the second one, the spirit came on me at the time, 123, because an angel, another angel, came years ago and this angel... Is, is a heavenly banker angel. And this heavenly banker angel is over all the finances of God in heaven. He's the one over all the finances of God. God raised, he's the angel over all, all the finances of heaven. This is, he's a heavenly banker angel. And this angel, when he appeared, uh, St. Papa Bob Jones and the other people have seen him that we've been connected to. And we've actually, my wife's seen him, we've had experiences with him. But this angel, this is what he said when he came. I have come to help the church bank with the bank of heaven. See, your finances is not based on the natural economy. Your finances are based on the heavenly the heavenly economy. Economy of heaven, not the, not the economy of earth. So that's why the economy of earth doesn't affect you. Financial crisis we're in doesn't affect you because you're under a different economy. And this angel 
the heavenly banker angel, he's over all the bank of heaven's money under God. Okay? That was the second sign. Then the third sign is at 303, the Spirit came on me again, and another brother that that angel appeared to, his name is Sean Bolt, he's another prophet. And this angel came to him, also appeared to him, and he told him, I'm transporting, he said, I'm transferring $5 billion to the church now for Jesus to give, get his inheritance of lost souls. His $5 billion will will bring the money to be able to bring in the billion soul harvest. And this and what happened to this brother at the on the date three three, March third, in two thousand three. So the, the number of the date was told was three three three, three three three. For Jeremiah thirty three three, the old because on Jeremiah thirty three three, two people have been called up to the third heaven and they saw the open door of heaven, John saw in Revelation four one, and on the open door of heaven is written the scripture Jeremiah thirty three three. So when you see that, or the time of 333, when, it, when that, you see that sign, that's God says the door of heaven is open to you. And that's what brings the blessing of God. Okay? Now, on that date, this prophet said, I entered my, he was, at a, he was they were doing a conference, and with that prophet Bob Jones, he was part of it, Sean Bolts, and he said, I came in my room one afternoon, and there was change all over my bed. Physical change, like quarters, dimes, nickels, pennies. And he said, this is strange. And he, and he actually went down to the front desk and said, I, did the lady, because he said, as far as he could tell, the lady had not come to clean his room yet. And he found out that she had no one had come into his room since he left, physically. So he knew it was the Lord. And the Lord said, count the change. And it was $3.03. And the date was 3-3. So and that was another sign God gave me at 3.03. Zero. When you see a zero to God, that means eternity. Change was a sign of change. Okay. So it meant financial change. Financial change from the angel, winds of change. So that's part of the prophecies to you. So you're going to have these, a lot of financial blessings coming. The divine exchange from the winds of change as he rearranges things, even in your finances. And last night God gave us a sign. I'm going to talk about this. We're going to talk about when this angel came to Bob, he, he told him, he said, I come every 50 years for Jubilee. For Jubilee. He said, I've been involved with the past moves of God going back many centuries in this nation. This angel told Bob. Winds of change, angel. But he says, I come every 50 years because each move of God is supposed to last, be a jubilee in the last 50 years. Most of them we've gotten three years out of them. Wow. You're supposed to get 50, and if you got three, you didn't get much, did you? No. So, so we have not gotten much. What the Lord said to Bob earlier, what? The seeds have died. What what is think about it? You're supposed to get fifty years and you get three to three three and a half years. That's not even ten percent. I mean, think about it. You only got three years, supposed to get fifty. See how much we missed out on? Yeah. But now we're gonna get it. Jubilee. And last night we get home from the meeting and Sue says, Someone online gave us guess the amount of gave, gave us fifty dollar donation. Lord said, There's the first Jubilee. There's a sign. So this is a sign to you. See, in the front, but it became a, a financial gift. 50, but the prophet, I'm going to read you about, the angel said, I move in every 50 years. Well, let me stay here. So the, um, well, don't take me with you then. <laughs> <laughs> so um, remember what Bob told me. He said the way, the intention of the spirit is to that fullness to fully come. Right. But men limit him when he does come. Right. And sometimes we kill it before it can grow up and mature. Because it starts out infant. You know, the seed opens, right. the move of God begins, it's messy, and God has to clean it up, grow it up, mature it. But we kill it right away because it's not what we want. 
It doesn't line up at the beginning because God uses human beings. Now, he said men have stopped this way two times in the past since in our lifetime. He said calm, but he said this one now won't be stopped because the Father said it's coming, but most are not ready. And um, the key to being ready and to let him do what he wants is get out of the way. <laughs> is yield. Um, don't try to argue with God and tell him to explain it to you because your head will kill it. He said, your spirit knows. Because you have the same spirit as God, right? Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. So when it kills it, um, just like the past move of God in Rochester was with Finney, right? Yep. Um, time ago, and we've been contending for that promise because the Lord said it would come back. Well, the, a prophet came to us not too long ago and basically gave us the same word that it had died, but God's cycle, the clock's coming back, and it's coming again. And he said, you have a big golden seed in your foundation under your church. I said, yeah, we know. Because we've been sitting on it like an egg. <laughs> because listen, prophets carry the words of the Lord. The prophecies, the words, whatever. Their job is to give it to the body and you are to sit on it until it hatches. But the problem is, the problem is we don't want to wait until it's time, until it germinates, until it's time. We want it now. We don't want to wait six months, six weeks, we don't six years, sixty years. And the Lord said, the prophets are ready, but the people aren't ready. And so most leaders in a city, if they're contending for a move of God, if it doesn't happen when they want, the way they want, how they want, and what they like, they give up and they go do other stuff. Which is true, it happens in our city. And Pat's been prophesying all these things all these years. But now the golden seeds are coming up. Never ever think that God forgot the word he gave you. No, never. That's why it's important to always pray your prophecies back to God. Mm. And the way I pray it back is I said, Lord, you said it. Here it is. Make me ready for it. Because mm. when you're ready, he's ready. He's getting it. Everybody ready. And the biggest way to get ready is dying to everything. Yep. And so God is, is shaking everything to get us to die to everything. And God has led everything in America, in the church, everything around the world, every nation, die, come to death. Yeah. Basically. He's shaking it all, right? But the golden seeds now, those promises, because why the cycle is back. Winds of change is blowing the cycle. The clock has ticked. That last talk, you're in the 12th hour. And those seeds are going to break forth. But we, but the Lord said, don't make the same mistake. Let me bring it, but don't judge it. As you have in the past, let me come and use everybody, I'll clean it up, grow it up, keep it for 50 years. Don't kill it. Amen. And so the winds of change brings 50 year moves. And guess what's back? This one won't be stopped. But he's looking for you guys to steward it, but not control it. Come on. Okay. Here's what the angel said when he appeared to Bob, word for word. I am a miracle working angel and I have been doing things every 50 years and nobody has laid it to heart. Nobody means nobody. They don't recognize what he's doing. Well, think about it. That means nobody. That's bad. <laughs> I have been bringing, the angel said, I, the angel wins a change, have been bringing a change every 50 years. I have been offering the church a jubilee every 50 years. Mm. Now, then the Lord said to Bob, he said, because this was having to do with 
he was did this meeting at a meeting which was the restoration of the healing revival which had begun in 1946. Okay, that healing revival had begun May 7th. Now, then the Lord said to Bob, he said, the big, that was when he, went, remember I just told right you about the, the, when he went down to the Shreveport area and gave that word when the angel said to him, and this was that move going back to 1946, the movement there, okay? That's still was part of that move. And the angel said to Bob when he first appeared to him, he said, I, now he appeared to him in 2000, the angel said, I've been moving with you since 96, but I didn't, you didn't know I was with you. Till now I've appeared to you. That was in 96. 96 was, was having to do with the former move that had been 50 years since the healing revival, which had been lifted in 56. It lasted, because the Lord gave a prophecy in 56 that it would leave America for 40 years and come back. And it came back on the exact date, 50, 40 years to the day. And that was 96. Okay. 96, okay. Now, what happened is then the, so the angel said that to Bob. Then the Lord said to Bob, after the visitation, when the angel said, well, I just read to you, every 50 years I come. The Lord said to Bob, now go back, because this move is being restored. It began in 46. Now he says, now go back, start going back 50 year cycles. And he said, you'll discover that what the angel said to you is true about former moves in America. Okay? Okay? So he goes back 50 years from 46. It's 1896. In 1896, there was a man of God an apostle named John Alexander Dowie. He was greatly used. He was an apostle, greatly used in, in the healing. John Alexander Dowie, he was from New Zealand, Australia. And he was using a great move in America uh, in 19, 1896, 50 years. So then, so Lord, then, then Bob goes back. Okay, that's 1896. So the angel said every 50 years, so then Bob went back, then the thing knew would go back 50 more years. See, and that would be the year 1846. Now, 1846 was the season of time for Charles Finney in our city when it got saved. Okay? 1846. In, in Rochester, New York. Now, here's the thing that's interesting about that one. Now, listen to this. I'm going to read this to you about that. Here is a fact about Finney's move. 1840, 1846, that season. They said here, this is the factual church history. The ministry of Charles Finney, through his ministry, he led 500,000 to Christ. Wow. Not 500, 500,000. That's in the 1800s. That's a lot of people in the 1800s. Now, in our city and region alone, he led 100,000 to Christ. So a fifth of that was in our area. 95% of the whole city was saved, and 100,000 were saved in that. Just as, that's just one revival. And from our city, 1,500 other revivals were sparked out of it. Not 15, 1,500, which is the dimensions of the New Jerusalem. That Because that had to do with God's habitation. That's what that meant. Okay. okay. Now, I bring that up because that's the 1846, 50 years. See, the angel winds of change was involved in all these moves in America. So then the Lord said, go back another 50 years, and you're at you're at the year 18, I'm sorry, 1796, 1846, okay? 1796. And in, I looked at, I looked this up, they're all it's all church history. In the year 18, I mean 1796, I'll read this one to you. It's amazing. See, see, when God says things, they're true. And you'll find them. Amen. See, I found all these things because the angel said it. The angel won't lie. Okay? In the year 1796, There was a revival in the year 1796 in America, and that revival was led by a man named Timothy 
Dwight. And this man was the grandson of Jonathan Edwards from the first great awakening in 1746, another 50 years. And this led to the Cane Ridge Revival in Kentucky in 1800. This is where the birth of it in 1896. But it was the grandson of Jonathan Edwards that led that revival. Okay. Then the greater thing manifested also in the Cane Ridge Revival in 1800 in Kentucky. Okay. But see, the angel, see, was it, cause he, see what the angel said? <laughs> it's in church history. Here it is. All these 50 years, go back 50, go back 50, go back 50, go back. And it go, then you go back 50 from 18, 1796, and it's 1746. Now, 1746, Jonathan Edwards. Our first revival of America. Now remember, Jonathan Edwards, remember, in the 1700s there, he had his church, remember, but remember, these two people, the last two I mentioned, that Timothy brother and now Jonathan Edwards, they were both located in the state of Massachusetts, your state. See how God's restoring it here? This is the word to you, that's why God said to give this word to you. So the last two that the angel went to change was involved with, were in Massachusetts, your state. Okay? There's things that wants to finish. Yep, the Lord said to Bob at the beginning, but things that have died, they're now going to be resurrected. Okay? Now, remember, Jonathan Edwards, in his church, he prayed 14 hours straight, and then the Spirit came on him, church history, here in the state, at his church, and then he preached sinners in the hands of an angry God message, and people saw the floor open up as they were sitting in the pews and they were saw into hell. They were going to fall into hell. Mm. Literally. And they all got saved. I, I believe you get saved too. If, you, uh, if, the, if the Lord opens the floor up and you see into hell. I think that would cause you to get saved. That literally is what happened. And that was like the birth of called the great awakening in our nation. This is the birth, part of the birth of our nation. This was this man, Jonathan Edwards, 1746. See? Now we're in the third great awakening. That's right. But I wanted to mention this because, see, when God says something, he can't lie. Now, I just looked this stuff up a couple days ago. The Lord said, look it up. He says, you'll find it all there. I just read it to you. This is a, you can, these are all papers that are on the Internet. You can find it yourself. See? It wasn't hard to find at all. I found it immediately. But it's what the angel said to Bob. I moved every 50 years, but nobody's laid it to heart. It lasted a short time each time, but it was supposed to last 50 years each time. So each one was supposed to be a jubilee. See, that one with Jonathan Edwards was supposed to last 50 years, never did. Finney, supposed to last 50 years, never did. Healing Revival, lasted 10 years, not 50. See, we, we've gotten hardly well, all, not much of what we're supposed to get. But the Lord has sent the angel to say, your generation, I want you to get it all. I want you to have a what? A full jubilee in Massachusetts. See, I want it to go last 50 years. Man, think of a movie that would last 50 years, what it would do. It'd go for what? To the whole world, you know it would. When it, ones that lasted three and four and ten years, some of them lasted months, they might, they've actually gone to the whole world. So what would a 50-year move do? It's never happened. The angel said it. It's never happened. It's But it's supposed to happen. But what? Winds of change has come to rearrange okay. these things. So I'll keep it in context because sometimes it's not exactly 50 years, but it's in that season. Because remember, people stop stuff. Bob warned, he said this last week, this wave, the third great awakening, has been stopped two times. But it will not be stopped this time. God will fully come with the fullness that he has said he would do. That's why Bob showed it to me, so that we would agree, Lord, we will not stop you this time. Do what you want. 
do what's necessary and what we need, even if it's not good at that moment, we think it's what we need. And Jubilee, what does it do? It saves us. It sets us free from bondage, yeah. from captivity, from hardship, from being a slave, from being broke, from being sick. And so when these waves, these tsunamis do, Bob said, what do they do, Sue? I said, well, they tear stuff up, right? Tsunamis come in, they break up everything, they bring along the junk, they push it out, they wash it out and rearrange the landscape. And then you can rebuild. So a jubilee is, is breaking up the old, but also giving you room to move in the new. Come on. And so that's why there's turbulence, and that's why the Lord said, navigate by my spirit. Don't navigate by what you see or what you think. Mm -hmm. And the fog came in, and the horn was sounding. He said, because not everybody's going to understand they might run into you in the fog, but you know where you're going. Yeah. Amen. And so these 50 years, this wave is here. It won't be stopped. It's God. But if we want to be part of the demolition, or do we want to be part of the, the rebuilding crew? Wow. As God sets a generation, gives them the opportunity, the third great awakening is the opportunity to get free. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, back to the original, when the angel winds of change appeared to Bob, Bob then went into another vision. And he said, in this vision, this is when he went down to the area that had been the move of God in 1946 in Shreveport, Louisiana. God had moved greatly there in the healing revival. And in this vision, Bob said, I saw myself, and he, it was his wife at the time, named Viola, and she, we met her, she went the first time Bob came to our church. And she said, he said, in this vision I was with Viola, she symbolized the bride of Christ. And Bob said, I saw, he said, in this vision I saw, like a, he said it was like a, like a dry desert area. And he said, and in this vision I saw a black snake was traveling like in the desert to a specific city he was heading to Shreveport, Louisiana. He said he looked like a black snake and he said that black snakes in the natural are harmless but he said they actually can be helpful in exterminating rats, mice and other vermin. Mm -hmm. But he says in the vision when he said as the serpent came closer he said Bob said I discovered suddenly I had a shepherd staff or shepherd rod in my hand. Remember? The shepherd rod last night. Okay? Under the shepherd rod. So you just talked about it a few minutes ago. Okay? He, Bob said, and I knew that this symbolized spiritual authority. The shepherd rod. In his hand. In the vision. He said, it was authority to deal with specific issues that I was about to confront. He said, suddenly, the serpent stopped in the vision, in the desert. And he said, in its approach to that city of Shreveport, Louisiana. It was his target. And he said, suddenly he said, the, the serpent saw that Bob saw him and he was shocked. Because he had stayed masqueraded and hidden for years. But God was exposing him to the prophet. This is in his vision. So the, the serpent was surprised, he said. And he said, then, he said, when he said, when I saw he was surprised, because he said he had been, he had been kept himself hidden but listen, listen to what he had done. As he said, what his task had been was he was nullifying the grace of God that had been given to certain areas. Which are those moves of God, those jubilees. Those were, that's grace, divine grace, who said last night, right? Yeah. These are the moves of God, God's grace giving you a move. But the, this serpent had nullified them all. And he said he knew that this serpent, he discerned, was an ancient religious spirit. His name was the spirit of the Nicolaitans. That's what Thor told him. And he, said, I, and he said, on the end of my shepherd rod was a hook. And the Lord said, that hook is my divine love. And Bob was able to ward him off. Mm -hmm. Keep him from his wife, the bride. Because he came to attack when he saw he was discovered by the prophet. Mm -hmm. 
This is in his vision. Now, he was also shown that this ancient serpent, and he said he actually was not a black snake, he was a cobra. And he had a, like a hood, a cobra's hat, when he really saw what he was. But you know, our cobras in the natural are very dangerous snakes. Now, the Lord told Bob that this cobra spirit had been working for hundreds of years stopping moves of God in our nation. Hundreds of years. He was an ancient serpent. He showed him that in the vision. Now, just to let you know as an example with Finney, with us, the year 2000, this is interesting because this was the year that God had the vision. Earlier, he had this, I think it was, he said, in March of that year, 2000. And Bob was in our city in September that year in our church. We were involved with that meeting. We came to Rochester, New York. So I'm in the meeting with Bob. Now, he had put this word out in May, so this was September. And the Lord had shown to me that, that this serpent had stole the Finney revival from us. So I went up to Bob. Personally, I said, now, Brother Bob, and I said, the Lord showed me, brother, when you put that word out, that that spirit of the Nicolaitans, he stole the Finney revival. He said, you're right, brother, he did. You're exactly right. He's the, he's the one that did it. He stole the move from your city. See, of Rochester, so that he confirmed that what the Lord had told us, that we were, but see, again, remember, these moves were happened for the whole nation. But see, this is that this serpent, the spirit of Nicolaitans, he has been stealing all these moves that I just let, all the 50 year moves that he's the one that stole them. Because the what? He was always hidden till 2000 when Bob saw him. See, he'd been hidden for hundreds of years. No one knew that he was stealing them. The church had not discerned it, they had not been shown it. But God said it was time to reveal it and expose it. So what? He won't succeed again. Right. Everybody say, I agree, Lord. I agree, Lord. See, he's not going to succeed in your state Amen. as he did in the past, Amen. in the 1700s. Amen. See, two times he stole moves from your state. Right. Not anymore. Thank you, Jesus. Something just happened. You feel that in the communion of the Spirit? Yeah. Something just came in here. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. There's a wave. There's that wave in here. I feel it. Yes, Lord. Boy, there's a presence of God coming all over you. Ooh. Holy Spirit, we receive you. We receive you. We receive you. Now, isn't this good news? I tell you, this is good news. Now, God said, you have had, let me give you that scripture if you want to hold that here. Just give me a minute here. Here it is. Go to Isaiah 49, verse 8. Isaiah 49, verse 8 in your Bible. Isaiah. 49 verse 8 God gave this scripture I know it there's such a presence of God in here man. It's, it's strong Isaiah 49 8 Thus saith the Lord In an acceptable time I have heard thee and in a day of salvation today have I helped thee Thank you, Lord. and I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant the bond of the covenant the shepherd rod last time we read it mm -hmm. for of the people what to establish the earth to cause to inherit the desolate heritages Lord, yeah. these are the former moves they become desolate 
See, that has to do with the first great awakening and the, the really would have been, then there was the 50 year after that with Jonathan Edwards' grandson yep. and, and, and Brother Cartwright involved with the Cane Ridge, 1800, Kentucky revival, those two. These are the desolate heritages of your area. But God said, I've heard you now. It's the day of salvation. I've come to help you, to preserve you, make a covenant with you, establish it, and cause you to inherit the former moves. That's your inheritance. What did Jesus say? You're going to reap what others have sown. You put no labor and they labored. And you've entered into their labors. Remember that? And Jesus in the gospel said that? That's what we're talking about. Others sowed, you're going to be able to reap what they sowed. Wow, See, Jonathan Edwards sowed that. That, that Timothy Dwight sowed it. Yes. Hundreds of years ago yeah. in this state. Bob said, I've left, but now you guys got to finish the writing. That's true. Yeah. What's left on my shelf, you're going to finish it. Yes, Lord. We have to finish the show us, Lord. Okay. Now. Uh, uh, uh. Glory. Now here's another thing I wanted to mention. Years ago, I had an incredible dream from the Lord 2015. And in my dream, I... Now this dream was just like being here and it was like in the natural, it was so clear in the dream. It was like being there literally. And in this dream, I was in our city and I looked up, it was, it was nighttime, and I looked up in the dream and I was, I was standing on the front yard of my parents' house there in Rochester, New York. And I looked up, Bob, in the sky over Rochester, New York and one quarter of the whole sky over the city was lit up with the light of heaven. Wow. It was incredible. The bright light of heaven was shining over a quarter of the whole sky. Mm. Over Rochester, the light of heaven. And, and, all, and what happened is all these angels were flying down with that light. They carried the light that lit up the sky. And they were all landing right in front of me in the front yard of my parents' house. Go, 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 they're all landing. And I'm like, hi. Right. And this was happening. I had this dream for weeks, night after night after night after night. The next night I have it again. The next night I have it again. The next night I have it again. But in this dream I had, the one dream I was just talking about, all of a sudden I looked up over Rochester and there was an open door of heaven over the city. Hover, and it was actually in the heavens over Rochester in the sky. But it was, but the, the door, it was a doorway, the shape of a perfect door, the shape of a door, but it was open. And the light of heaven, the bright white light was shining of heaven out of the door. And here's the thing that was interesting. Inside the door, I saw a, it looked like a halo of light, circular halo, was inside the door. Still in heaven, but inside the door that entered into heaven or came out of heaven, the third heaven, okay? The dwelling place of God. And all of a sudden, that halo flew down out of the door of heaven. And it flew down and it came over the heads of God's people in Rochester. And it was hovering over the heads. And what it was, it was the crown of glory and honor that Adam and Eve had before the fall. Oh, I feel the presence of God just oh, I'm telling you. Psalm 8, verse 4 and 5. This is God's, and then after it, it was the first thing that flew down out of the door of heaven, then following it were all these angels carrying this. The door of heaven was made up of the same light. The, the halo was the same light of heaven, and the angels flew behind it. All came down, like there was like a hundred of them. And each angel, one looked like a star, one looked like a wheel. Each angel was a different like shape. But they all carried that same light of heaven. And they all flew down to Rochester. And in my dream, 
I saw this man I used to know before he was, I was saved. And I, before I was saved, I used to do tons of drugs. And this was one of my drug buddies. And, and, and I was, I, this in my dream. He appears and he's still in that lost condition. And all of a sudden, I, then all this stuff happens. And all of a sudden, I look at him and suddenly he's saved. And the Lord said, yeah, my, he said, my light saved him and everybody else, the prophecy that Bob gave us that everyone will be saved 100%. Because the, the, the light of heaven saved everybody Amen. in my experience. Mm. Now, I want to read you a scripture. The reason I bring that up is because the Lord said it was the crown of glory and honor. Okay? Now, the Lord gave a scripture to Bob about this restoration of the former moves. Here's the scripture he gave him. It's the book of 1 Peter, chapter 5. 1 Peter, chapter 5, verses 2 through 4. I'm going to read it to you. 1 Peter, chapter 5, verses 2 through 4. Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willing, willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. And that's what I saw come down. That halo was the crown of glory and honor. And the night before we came here on the Day of Atonement, Sue saw a vision of yours. Copped up and written. She saw in this vision. She saw giant. Shut about last night a little bit. She saw giant like shafts of light of heaven coming down. And that Lord said that that's what I had seen. You mean here? No, she saw. It. I don't know where. She was like coming coming by out of heaven. This is Friday night, the day of atonement. Corridors, oh. corridors of light. That's what you talked about. And now, when I saw those lights, that was the same light that Sue saw. Now, here's the thing. Now, Bob said to us the first time he was in Rochester, everyone would be saved. But he said the last thing he did before he left was he said, we're going to now turn to all the four directions. And he said, we're going to loose the angels to the north, to the south to the east and to the west. And he said, and they are, God said they're going to bring his great salvation to this city. The angels will create it, he prophesied. Now, in my experience, they were all, it was the light of heaven, but Bob said these angels were all winds. And one of them was the winds of change angel. He told us that. Among the winds. And the Lord opened it up after the dream and he said to me, the two things that will save the city is the light and the wind. Then he said, go back to Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3. And it said in Genesis that the Ruach of God hovered over the waters. Or the Holy Spirit, but it's the, Ruach, the original says the Ruach of God. Now the, you look up that word Ruach in the Hebrew and it means winds. The Holy Spirit is wind, right? John 3, hey. Jesus said that. He moves like wind. Remember that? Mm -hmm. So, God said, in the beginning, I created from the wind of God. That's the name of the Holy Spirit, the wind of God. Breath of wind of God. Mm -hmm. now, I bring that up because in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it talks about that, it goes back to creation in Genesis 1, and it says that in creation, the Lord released the light of the glory. When he said, let there be light. And in 2 Corinthians 4, read it, you'll see the first four, six verses. It says that that light was the from the face of Jesus Christ. It was the light of the, the, light of the glory. The Lord explained this to me. He said, what you saw is the wind of God and the light of God will save your whole city. Things have changed. Yep. Now, see, what's going to happen is that crown of glory is going to come and hover over your head. Now, you've seen that, have any of you seen that picture of William Branham that they took with the halo of light over his head of the angel? 
that's what is going to happen to all of you. Oh, God. That, that's the crown of glory and honor. God allowed that picture to be taken because it was a prophecy. Where, when was this? It was taken in January 24th, 1950. Oh. That picture, you can look it up on the internet. January 24th, 1950, they took a supernatural photo of William Branham, and there's a halo of white light hovering over his head. The angel that worked with him. God allowed it, and it was a prophecy. That the, proving that the angel was with him also. Uh -huh. But that is what's going to come over your heads. Oh, remember, crowns are worn, worn on your head because your head has to learn to be spirit first. That's true. Not in your head. Get out of your head into your spirit. But also, well, who wears crowns? It's kings and queens. Yes. And that's you in Christ. You're kings and priests yeah, 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 unto God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yes. Okay. Now, so remember. You are getting your inheritance tonight, beginning tonight, of the desolate heritages, the former moves in Massachusetts. That's your part. And now remember what the Lord told that the, what the through Bob, the Lord said to Sue in heaven, it won't be stopped again. Mm -hmm. So this spirit will not be able to steal him anymore. But don't crash in the fog of the enemy. Right. Now, oh yeah, that part. I was looking to the Lord. If there's anything else, the Lord just reminded me. Now, in that, when this angel, and when Bob was in that meeting with the angel, when he was talking about what I'm reading to you, the angel wins a change. Part of his team was stopped. They couldn't get to the meeting until like the last day. And you know what stopped them? They were fogged in. And the Lord told him the fog was demonic. Mm. It was a demonic fog. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said the angel winds of change was going to blow away the winds of resistance of the enemy of the demonic fog. Yeah. That's what Sue saw was coming, warning the foghorn. Yeah. Yeah. This is an original word. That's why it came here because it was part of the original word. It's a warning. Remember, it's demonic. Mm. It's a fog. But what? Again, so that the ships can't see the leaderships you and they'll crash on the rocks. You can't walk by sight. You have to walk by faith. Yes. If you can't see, you then listen. But remember, winds of change are going to blow away the fog. Okay? And the, God's wind is greater than the enemy's winds of resistance of the enemy, mm -hmm. which is the demonic fog, demons. Now, remember, in these prophetic words I shared tonight, see, this has been going on for hundreds of years in our nation. But now, and the Lord said to Bob tonight, but didn't you say, brother, that God was going to do a new thing? Yes. Mm -hmm. See, this is the new thing. He's telling you before it happens, so you'll be right. you'll know. Psalm 48, behold, I'll do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Shall you not know it? Yes. Yes. Fact, he, he came back to say, what did he say? Will an old stump lift? Yet if I blow on it, That's right. it will lift. That's right. That's right. His resurrection, he said. Yes. Now he said that these, see, these were seeds of life that God had planted in the past. That's in the part of the prophecies. But guess what God was talking about with Bob? He said, I'm going to blow on them, the seeds again. They're going to live again. Mm -hmm. They're going to come back. They're going to grow. Mm -hmm. See? Now, it's very scriptural what he said. Isaiah chapter 6, he talks about the stump. <laughs> and, the, and growing in the growing again, Isaiah 6, it's in there. Read it. Isaiah 6? Isaiah 6, when he gave the, the calling yeah. to Isaiah, mm -hmm. the prophet. Talks about the stump growing again, of the rem calls it the remnant. 
It's the way he puts it. See? God always has a remnant. In every season. He's still got them. 10%. Remnant means 10%. So God has them in this season and time. And they're coming into full bloom. Again. They're going to bloom. Okay? Now... When Bob came to Rochester, he told us about the Angel Winds of Change, was involved in the restoration of this revival with us. And every time we go to where the where, where Finney ministered in Rochester, there's a big rock, a monument, and a rock in the city of Rochester, York, at the church where he preached. And it's got a plaque with Finney on it, on the plaque on the rock. And every time we go there, the Angel Winds of Change comes, it's happened so many times, and he's just blowing physical wind. Because he's involved with the restoration. Amen. And people have been amazed. They go there with me. They say, then the wind blows the wind. I said, yeah, I know. And they all get so drunk in the spirit. Because it's that angel. <laughs> it's the prophecy. Because he's come to restore yes. the former moves. And what did Bob say? Where's the wind blowing on you? Yeah, when he came to us, Roger, he, he came out this last meeting. He said, where's the wind blowing on you, brother? And it began to blow on my head. <laughs> Physical. And Bob said, he said, you're too much in your head. Get out of your head and get into your spirit, brother. He said, this is your word to Rochester, New York Church. The first time I met Bob in Canada before he came to Rochester, when I went to shake his hand, he didn't shake my hand. He just said, do you feel the wind, brother? And wind began to blow on me. He said, those are the angels that are going to be with me when I come to your city. And then we were there. And then he came out and they began to blow on our head. And when we got to Buffalo... They blew on his feet because God was dealing with their walk. With us, he was dealing with our head, being our head, you know, getting out of our head into our spirit. But in Buffalo, they weren't walking in the spirit, so the angel blew the wind on their feet. They were disobedient. Okay? So, whatever God's dealing with, the wind would blow on. And you can feel the wind even now coming in here. That angel winds a change. He's in the atmosphere. My hands are going numb from the power now. I feel the wind. It's here. He's here. He's just blowing in the room. He's just come in here. You can feel him. Yes, Lord. Just raise your hands. Raise your hands. Receive the winds of change now. Receive the winds of change right now. Receive the wind blowing on you. Of the angel winds of change. And he, what did he say? I've come to bring a divine exchange and to rearrange things even your finances. Thank you, Lord. To bring jubilee to you. Freedom and liberty. Thank you, Just say, say, blow here, Lord. Blow there, Lord. Blow everywhere. <laughs> it's what he's doing. You're agreeing with him. Yeah. You're agreeing with him when you say that. You're in agreement. He's blowing here. He's blowing there. He's blowing everywhere. Hallelujah. Oh, you can just feel his presence. Some of you feel like a strange, numb feeling in your hands. Who feels that? Some of you feel that. If you shake your hands, if you feel that. See the different people are feeling it? See back there, she feels it. She feels it. These people feel it. That's the angel. And if you don't feel it, it's still happening to you. Receive it by faith. Because it's still happening to everybody. Some people he gives the feelings to. Some people he's building your faith. Whoa. But it's happening to everybody. Thank you, Lord. Whoa. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Whoa. You can feel it. You're getting filled with the Spirit now. He's filling you. Hallelujah. 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 So as I shared earlier, I was standing in the wind. And I then I sat down and laid down because the, you see, the best thing you can do when the wind starts blowing is surrender. Yield, yield to the Spirit. If you, even if you don't know, have a clue, 
what he's doing. He said, just be available, be willing. Did Mary know what she was agreeing to? No. Not really. You're a virgin, you're going to get pregnant. It's going to be real fun. You're going to get driven out of town. <laughs> Does she know that? No, she just said yes. You know, as, as we, be it unto us, Lord, according to your word. According to the words we have heard. You're only responsible for the light that you have. Jesus said that. But walk in the light. Walk in the light that I've given you. And as you grow, you'll be given more. You're only responsible for what he's given you. Right? If he gives you one measure and you're faithful, he'll give you another. Some of us are trying to get to where we're going and we're not ready for it. But if you yield where you're at, he'll get you there and you'll get it all. So as soon as the spirit starts blowing, I've learned to get out of the way and just surrender. And he blew right through and I just laid down in the vision, my head on the pillow. Every time God gives us a word or we give others word, I've always taught that in our training classes that we do, just yield. Just say yes. You don't have to figure it out. He'll do it. You can't do it. Can you make yourself pregnant? Not unless you're a certain type of frog. They can, they can <laughs> change back and forth. The word of God is a seed. It's a living seed. And when we just say yes, then he said the spirit of God will hover over you and overshadow himself because he's the seed. And what looks like him, he can overshadow. If we don't agree with God, he can't overshadow you because you don't look like him in that moment. But when you agree, these three agree in heaven, these three agree on the earth. Mm -hmm. When there's an agreement, he goes, ah, mm -hmm. I can overshadow that because that's me. Yeah. Jesus said, Father, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we just simply say yes, whether we understand or not, Father says, ah, I grounded it, now let's go do it. Because you create a womb where God, you create a room where God can come in the womb and just state the promise. Amen. Wow. But our biggest thing is then we try to help God out. Mm. <laughs> and we get messes. But he said, but you, I have made you guys ready. So one last thing, because we didn't know, we've been walking this out. When Pat and I got married, um, May 7th, um, 2009, 579, that's how I remember. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. We got a honeymoon package given to us, was a land and sea, three days at sea, four or five days at, on land type thing. It was a, yeah. uh, for a, a cruise. A cruise. And we went to Fort Lauderdale, because remember, prophets are windows, and our lives are prophetic pictures of what God is saying and doing in the church. We get to the pier to, to find our ship. We had never been on one together. Let me get to the pier, and as God is my witness, this is true because you can Google it and find the sign. There was an international yep. winds of okay. change global meteorological oh. convention yep. <laughs> huge banner, huge banner, going on change. at that pier yep. that day we were there. That, that banner, huge winds of change. Banner. Winds of change. We no. about fell out because we, we were at the wrong pier because our ship was on oh, two. Yeah. That was on four. Our ship was on four and we were on two. And anyway, anyways, we were there. We saw that sign. I said, Pat, our honeymoon is in the winds of change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, you know, the ship went to different countries and ports and all that. And we did prayer journey. But the whole point of it was back then at that very 
port, that very pier, yep. that we were at with the winds of change, Glo international global meteorological, meteorological wow. conference, convention, wow. was the very pier yep. in Florida where they turned back the ship. Of the Jews in 1941. Of the Jews oh, wow. in 1941 and they, and they were killed. And they went back and they oh, wow. went all in the concentration camp and killed them. Wow. America rejected them. Remember remember the, remember that? Remember the, the ship, the ship. Yeah. Remember the ship was turned back. But that pier is where it landed. Wow. And Bob gave the prophecy that there had to be repentance so that it could be restored, our nation could come back. The ship, yep. the ship. Yep, that's right. Turned God back. Yes, his people. That's an opportunity. So, but what happened was we yep. did repentance for that. Yep. But our life, that started the winds of change. There was an international awakening of the winds of change at that time. Yep. There was an invitation for the church to, to participate in what God had wanted to restore. Because when we turn, we, when we tell God no, because we don't understand or we don't want it, there was repercussions in the spirit, but that's been taken care of because, you know, there was intercession. But what happened was it's back. The ships are coming back out of the sands of time again. Yep. And we have a second time, a second chance to pick up what was lost or left undone mm -hmm. so we can fulfill that mandate that heaven wanted to do then. Back then, it's our turn to see it fulfilled. Here's the original prophecy. Winds of change outbreak that's global, international. That was the International Winds of Change Conference. Yeah. Okay. It begins and happens all over the world. Yeah. See what what God is doing right now is hitting every nation. If you if you look at certain, um, uh, maybe not mainstream media but alternative media, it shows all the disasters that are happening on the planet right now everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's extreme, um, shaking, flooding, disasters, all kinds of stuff. Because God is breaking the demonic structures that have held nations captive for a long time. That's what a jubilee is. And that's what Winds of Change does, is it breaks the bands so that God can move across the lands and bring salvation. It's harvest time, right? So that began our journey, and now we didn't know we were going there for winds of change. Yep. But he said, as prophets, you have to understand, look at what I'm doing. And we went on the ship and we did that. So all that time since 2009, we've been on this uh, navigating by the Spirit. The journey. But what happened was they turned the ship away. Yep. They didn't want it. They didn't want them. And so... The danger is when the fog comes in and opinions of men is like the fog, the demonic uh, voices that cloud men and get and try to block your, the truth. He said, make sure you navigate by my voice, by my spirit. Don't go by what you see in here. Listen to me. Don't turn back my ships, yes. my leaderships. Right. Don't let them cra crash on the rocks of adversity. But my foghorn, my voice, you're going to hear my voice in the wind. Don't follow the crowds. Follow me. Amen. Follow me. He didn't take a big cruise ship out onto the stormy sea. He only took his 12 and laid down on the ship with them. The remnant knows what to do. The world will follow. <laughs> They'll figure it out as they get, as Jesus comes, the way they need to save them, set them free. So we have an opportunity, you know, we're in global change and we're also in a, a, a cycle of uh, elections, not, in just, not just in our nation, lots of nations are changing governmental seats right now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who you like or don't like, God knows the true heart and he can use the wicked rulers, yep. he has done all through the Bible, to accomplish his plan. But the thing we have to really stay true to is, Lord, what are, you, what are we to do? 
Because if we will stay true to the mandate that's coming, if you will stay true to the mandate coming to you, you will you will see the fullness of what has been planned way back there yep. in the land. It will now come so you can understand, behold my hand. And he said earlier to you about the land. Yes. Land. So you get to inherit what was yep. lost right. and finish what's left to be done. Yep. I don't know what it is. Even as Bob said. Yep. Because God's always looking for a man or a woman or a child yep. to simply say yes. And he'll say, here you are. You go run with it doesn't matter. It matters that we finish what's left on our bookshelf. That's all we're here for, is to finish, give Jesus his inheritance. What's written on our scrolls. What's written on our school. It's about your scrolls. So anyways, um, the winds of change, we're in that cycle. There's going to be, uh, like a tsunami, there's going to be um, I, I call it a construction site. You know, when, when you have an old building and you, you set the charges and it comes down, then you clear away the rubble, then you measure it all out and you rebuild. We're in that cycle. Yep. We're going to see a lot of demolition, uh, renovation, yep, restoration. restoration, and mobilization and rebuilding again. Yeah. It's not the end. It will look like the end, but it's not. God's just getting started. He's going to harvest the, our generation. But you have the honor of moving in his glory. That's right. And moving with the angelic hosts because they are the harvesters. They are the reapers. Amen. You give men the invitation. Who, who saves them? The Holy Spirit does. Right. You speak God's word. You comfort people. You love them. But the Holy Spirit is the one that reaps them. The tsunami is in front of you, or actually behind behind you. Don't run away from it. Run into it, because it's God. And what he laid in the foundation of the 13 colony states. Yep. The 13. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Hallelujah. Jesus said would be the foundation for the salvation of our nation. It's true. Because we're the 13. Yep altars that God started with. Amen. So let your fire go hotter. Mm. Because God knows how to kindle it. Yes. Thank you. And if there's not enough prayer, God knows how to get the church to pray. Oh yeah. All you need is like a hurricane to come or an earthquake to come or something to come. If we don't obey, he knows how to get us to pray. But do we does it have to come exactly. to no. But sometimes it's needed because he has to break demonic structures and bands yep. to hit it with his hand to fulfill his plan mm -hmm. so the church will stand and be the lighthouse in the land. His word is like a hammer. His word is a hammer. Yep. And the hammer is here. Yeah. That sister's prophecy the other day. Yeah. So anyways, this is the message. Um, we're about to in enter a jubilee cycle. Yep, that's right. And it's going to be messy, but it's going to be also God. Yep. Amen. Amen. So don't account everything to the devil and to the wicked administrations and the deep state and all these other things, because guess what? It's been there since the fall. Yeah. It's, a, it's between darkness and light. Right. But what are you to do? Come on. The easiest thing, simplest thing to you to do is be still and see the salvation of God. And yield and just follow his voice. Just yield. Jesus said, I only do what I see my father doing. And I only say what I hear my father saying. That's all we do. Amen. We give the messages he gives us to get to you. The rest is up to you. You're going to finish a lot of things that were stolen. Yep. They're coming back around, yep. and it's your time now. Amen. It's not your works, it's his. Amen. Every generation has to run with the mandates of the sun. But I want you to know that it's begun. Yes, Lord. Because I have set your clock. Mm -hmm. I have tuned your dial. Yes, Lord. And though you've had to labor and believe for a while... 
Watch, children. Yeah. What I will present to you in a glory pile, mm. because suddenly you're going to see all the seeds that came through adversity, and you're going to see that I fertilized them mm. with your faith. Mm. Mm. And by your faith and by your trust in me, you will see my breath blow oh. on what you thought was dead. Yeah. You will see my rising of my resurrection instead. Yeah. For are you not in the door of my breath? Are you not in the door of my wind? Mm. Mm. My breath has come again. Mm. And those things that have been slain and that have laid, laid fallow and shallow shall sprout again. Yeah. I am the resurrection, Whoa. and I am the life, yeah. and I am the light of all men, and your light has come, and it is time It's time to rise and shine, Yes, Lord. because you're standing in the divine, you're standing in my glory. Now be my wine and give hope and give recovery to those that cannot see. Yeah. Give faith and give assurance to those that cannot hear. Mm. And bring peace and joy to those bound in fear. Okay. And bring love to the broken. Mm. For these two days you have been given your token. Ah, yeah. 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 Oh, For it shall unfold in the manner which I choose. Glory. Mm. But know this, I have chosen you yeah. to carry my words mm. all over the earth. Mm. Jesus. Mm. <laughs> Glory to God. You don't have to physically go, you know, your spirit can be taken everywhere. The prophets, the saints, they were all caught up in the spirit. When they were in the spirit, they didn't know where they were. Get ready to travel. Get a passport, you might need it. <laughs> but I, I've been to many nations without one because God can catch you there in your dream. Wherever you are, suddenly you find yourself somewhere else. Get used to that. Because you're a spirit. Get used to being a spirit. Right. The Holy Spirit takes your spirit on a journey with him. Amen. Not other spirits. No. You don't go anywhere unless the spirit takes you. That's right. The Holy Spirit. Amen. But just as it's in the word, the spirit will come and say, hey, you want to go for a ride? Sure, God, where are we going? <laughs> just say yes. Yeah. Oh, you're done? Well, for that part. Yep. Oh. <laughs> the word. <coughs> we'll pray for people. <laughs> we'll pray for people. We just wanted you to switch. Whatever. Switch? Channels or whatever we're doing. He doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah? Lord. Yeehaw. Oh, that's scary. Yay. Wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad. Well, first, on the admin side, as Lord. always, I put the administrator. <laughs> He's getting drunk. <laughs> I'm getting very drunk. <laughs> I put an offering basket over there. So, at any point tonight, if you feel like you and want to give. If anybody wants to give online, there's, there's things Thanks. online. They can give. There's links on the video, too. They want to give links on the radio. I hope you want to give links on the video. Oh, there's yeah. links on the video. Oh, links on the video. Yeah. Yeah. On the video. Oh, if they want to give, if they want to give. Grab yeah, the damn it, dude. If they want to give, they can give online. They know, okay. Can, you can give online. Amen. And there's also an offered mask in here. <laughs> if you want, put something in fine. If you don't, don't. Either way, we love you. And, uh, 
lights on the radio. So it's right? there if you want. Right? Yeah. 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 For the boom box. And, uh, you can say the boom box. I think I just people want prayer. Right. So yeah, what we'll I was pray, thinking, we'll uh, I thought it might be a little bit easier if we did the prayer on the rug. So if people bounce their heads and it won't hurt as much as I do. The only thing is, um, do, it yet? do you? Okay. So the only thing is. Oh, because of that. Um, we testimony Yeah. Hang on one second. We um we turned the live stream off last night. Yes. Because um. Sometimes people don't want to yes. their right. prayer time recorded yes. publicly. So if they want to record, they can use your phone. So we do that. So we didn't air it last night, and we can turn it off yep. now, too. It's yep. up to we'll all of you. Do you want it or they can record recorded the phone. or not? I just is so leave it on, to be honest with okay. you. Is everybody okay if it's left on and you pray with it? We're not going to be able to see people. But if that? we do it over there, yeah. we won't be able yeah, to Yeah, do it right here. That's all. Okay, we'll yeah. just move this out of the way, and we'll yes. just pray one at a right. time. And then I know we could Sometimes if you get a prophecy, it will be on the live stream, so sometimes it's good. Uh, yes. But if we get something personal to you, I'll just tell you privately. I won't tell it publicly, right. just so you guys know. Um, just make sure I know. No more kidding. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so we're going to shift into um, um, personal or uh, public right. personal ministry. <laughs> yes. So we're just going to move this out of the way. Listen, uh, uh, you'd have to go to if the, um, the if you're hungry, you want Susan, Susan, you're free. Susan O'Mara. Okay. That's just for, you want know, what? Facebook page, Susan O'Mara. Oh, we're going it's to have Susan O'Mara, we're right? You're set up right now for that. Susan G. O'Mara. Susan G. O'Mara. The links are in the video, too. I put them in the comments. No, but they want, she wanted to find the video, so. Yeah, Susan G. O'Mara. On Facebook. Facebook. That's us right there. Oh, it's on Facebook. I thought you just had a separate site. Then. No, no, it's on Facebook. We'll, oh. we'll send it to you later for meeting, Bob. All right. So if anybody uh, so you was listening that didn't come tonight, you can go to Susan and Patrick's Facebook site, yep. which is Susan G. O'Mara. Yep, yep. All right. Or Patrick so O'Mara. Or Patrick O'Mara. Yep. Or Susan and Patrick O'Mara. Yeah. 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 Susan G. O'Mara. I'm sorry. When you go to my Facebook wall, you will see both of us in the picture. So you had a testimony you wanted to share from last night? Yes. Okay. A lot of people got free last night. They so. Did. so make sure you speak loud. Turn it again. That's good. Well, from um, January 3rd until uh, probably mm -hmm. May 2nd, I had three major operations and uh, in my abdomen. And um, one of them went sepsis and uh, was going to die. And um, the Lord healed me last night Man. because I had Man. up above, I had an incision, 10 inch incision. And up above it from the last surgery, it tried to develop a, uh, a hernia. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all soft now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Glory. God is faithful. Amen. 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 Awesome. Amen. And uh, I haven't had any pain. It's uh, thank you, it's Lord. Soft. It's all good. It was real hard. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Glory to God. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So remember the power we talked about. Divine, divine grace. grace. Yep. Amen. Jesus is the healer, isn't he? Yes, he is. Anybody else have a testimony healing from last night that got healed by God? Okay. All right. Who's up first for prayer? All right. First, All right. Up, come on down, Carol. <laughs> Are we too close, Ted, or should we back up a little? Screen, yes. Maybe we back, back up better. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to. Well, I can hold the mic away, so we won't do personal stuff. So you're okay. Chill out. We'll just do. We'll just release the spirit. I have to believe it on. She doesn't want to be on. I don't want to be on. I will hold the mic away. So we'll do you later then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, See, the Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He, we can do private ministry later. Anybody yes. want public prayer? Come up here. Can you like You guys online receive. Yeah. Receive. The angels are moving right now. They are. 
tired while you're speaking. I could just feel the like rumbling in my stomach. Yeah. Not really. Are you sure you're not hungry? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's because I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to tell me and the Holy Spirit. What is telling you? Oh, okay. Oh, I think you already know what the Holy Spirit's been telling you. <laughs> Sometimes. I think I think because a lot of times our minds get anxious because we try to figure stuff out. Yeah. Okay. Just say, Lord. Lord. I receive the winds of change to begin to blow in me, blow in my head, and get me in my spirit instead. I surrender to you. I let everything go. Now, Lord, clear, give me clarity. Help me to focus and not be scattered. And make everything clear to me. So I can hear you. So I can see you. So I can obey you. We thank you for your peace now. Your peace. Just bring everything clear. We thank you for soul peace, heart peace, life peace. Holy Spirit, bring release now and begin to blow. Lift her up into a brand new flow so she can grow. Thank you. Now, realize that when we give him permission, it's going to be fun. And all you get to say is, I yield. Do what you want to do. Yep, because he's going to make you brand new. Okay. So also, as you want to try to just the Lord, uh, handing you a ring, which uh, symbolizes covenant and he wants you to remember he's made covenant with you it's a relationship it's a relationship yeah. amen yeah. so amen. well yeah. i know i mean he wants you to be encouraged even more by it okay yes you belong to him you're going to be okay just let him steer your car okay But I wouldn't go up there unless the Holy Spirit was directing me to do that. Right. To speak. Right. Yep. To speak. Right. Um, but there's a few things I wanted to ask you. I have to ask you something. Remember what we were talking tonight when you were saying about the unfolded spirit and the Yeah. Shut me off because they repented. Yeah. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Our responsibility is what he tells us our part. Our responsibility in any given thing is, I don't take ownership of nothing unless the Lord says to. Sometimes we take on more than what God intends. If he says, you have to do something about this, right? And this is what I want you to do, then that's what we do. Don't take on things that people assign you to do. Listen to the Holy Spirit for your assignment. Because you're only responsible for what he asked you to do. Yeah. That's freeing. Right. Don't let, don't get burdened down by things that, that you're not responsible for. But you have to realize everything that's been stuffed deep down inside, it's all coming out in the open because it's always been there. And people. He's just waking us up to our condition so that we can repent and he can heal us and give us different hearts. That hatred has always been there since the fall. But, but, but Jesus God said, wants, they hated me, they're going to hate you. That's right. You can't do anything about people's hate. But you can release the love of God to them. Amen. To be a revelation to them. 
and God will breathe on it. And we can do that by divine grace, right? That's it's right. divine That's grace. Yes. 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 Yeah. So be be the fruit of the spirit to somebody else, the fruit they need. Mm. Yeah. Mostly yeah. 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 We're just to be living epistles or windows of the expressions of Jesus. He said that one needs love, be love to them. That one needs peace, that one needs this, that one needs that. Whatever the need is, that's what you will show others as you're led by the Spirit. And we're giving them God's character. Or his the fruit, yeah. Character. yeah. The fruit of the Spirit that's we're developed. Them his character. Mm -hmm. that's right. yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's you're a witness, aren't you? <laughs> Can I just share one thing really kind of cool? Uh, a few months ago, when Dottie, not Dottie, 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 and her friend Cindy, Mm -hmm. Over there with the long hair and the blue long yeah. shoulders. Okay. And remember, you're going to Connecticut, and in the sky, no lie, because you're talking about the feet tonight, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Something about the foot. I saw a giant left foot in the sky. It was a cloud. And you could hear, clearly see the big toe and all the other toes. It was a foot. They saw it on their way to Connecticut. I was in Raymond, Massachusetts. Yeah, because guys at work. Sometimes I see the angel's feet, sometimes I see the Lord's feet, because God is working in your region. You'll see his foot, his oh, work, operating. Yes. Right. The foot. right, because God's at work, follow the foot. Yeah, yeah. You walk in his footprints, right? And the sets of righteous name, like, Lord, you know, yeah. the beautiful of feet of him, the grace of news, you know, I know those scriptures, but, you know, I wondered what it meant. He's showing you he's working, just yield to his works, let him do it. Just follow. But see, it's fun because I didn't get to poke your eye out. <laughs> you're starting to recognize by seeing in the spirit what's happening in the spirit in a picture form. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yep. All right. Thank you. God bless you. Anybody else want prayer? Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. I don't need anything. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I didn't know if you were sitting there because you were. Oh, it's on the live stream too. I think sometimes I pull it away. So they don't always hear everything. So what happened to you last night? You got released. I got released from anxiety. There you go. Yeah. How do you feel today? Much better. I'm interviewing a healed of the Lord. Interview yeah. here. Yes. It was, yeah, I was very heavy laden yesterday. Didn't realize I was, you know, when you, when you were naming names. Then when you came to anxiety, it's like I lost it. Mm -hmm. Amen. You're in the camera. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason sorry. I asked is because people watching need to know that the Spirit is setting you all free of whatever is you're locked up in, Amen. and hers is anxiety. There's a lot of believers in anxiety because of all the stuff being stirred up. But she got free. Yes, I got free. Because we're in a jubilee. The Holy Spirit's jubilee yes. is being offered to everyone that wants to be free. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world because the Holy Spirit is always working in the world. But we can walk in freedom Amen. in the midst of everything else that's going on. It was just it was just so different because I, I didn't even realize it was an anxiety. I just knew the situation was so wrong. Yep. And didn't know what to do. Yep. Because I was at my wit's end. Yep. And then when you, you called out anxiety, I was really surprised. Sometimes the place of our wit's end is actually the best place because then God can bust in and say, That's done. Because then we're ready to die because we can't do anything about it. And so when he goes, oh, good, you're in a good place. Now that you're done, I'm coming in with divine grace. So, Father, give her a double dip. Give her a double flow. Divine grace. It says flowing through the soul. Divine grace flows through the soul. It's the operations of the spirit of God bringing the breath of God bringing the winds of God, the rays of God, the mind of God for the operations of God. So, Father, come and blow. Let him increase, grow, so that she will know 
the things that you're about to show. <laughs> In Jesus' name. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Okay, if there's no one else, we're going to end the live stream. So if you want prayer, come up now. Otherwise, we're going to end it. <laughs> I'm just getting people's attention. So. <laughs> yeah, I used to do that. Years ago, I used to pogo stick. I was the pogoer. <laughs> you know what the secret to that is? Letting go. Because I would get power like lightning would hit me and go down through my head or come up through the floor. But I didn't know how to release it. And it got so strong I would literally poke a stick. <laughs> and the Lord said, let go to my flower. And so when I just let go in my spirit, I never poke a stick again. Because, I, because he said, if you can't handle your drink at the stage you are now, you can't minister in the day of my power. You have to learn to grow in my power so that you can release the greater power. And so the minute I let go, the minute the lightning began to flow, and he said, now I can trust you with more power. Because if we fall on the floor and shake and bake and everything, what good are we? Shake and bake. Well, I do too at times. But what I'm saying to you is God is yeah, teaching yeah, you yeah. how to flow in the spirit so you can adapt to more increase. So you say, Lord, I let go to the increase of your flow. Come how you want to. Come how you want to. Here I am. There comes the wind. <laughs> yeah. See, it's real simple to shift. Sometimes we just don't understand. What... There you go. <laughs> yeah, it is. It gets hot. That's the Holy Spirit is fire. If we don't let go, we can't expand. We can't stay the old wineskin. The new wineskin can stretch, can flex, can expand to the need of the Holy Spirit inside. If he needs you bigger, if you are rigid, then he can't increase. But a new wineskin can carry more and stretch. <laughs> You're going to have lots of visitations. I do that. I just lay on my bed and let the Holy Spirit catch me where he wants. Tell me what he wants. Show me. We have to be available. I'm available, Jesus. Here I am. And he'll say, come up here. I want to show you something. No. Okay, so, um, and then we're going to pray for the one that wanted private. Okay. Are you still want prayer? Yes. Okay. So, what happened to you yesterday, last night? I think I got a little clear. Yeah. Especially, especially in, in, in the, because I'm gifted in, in dance. So, I, yeah. so what happened to you last night? Let me pray for you. No, I didn't get prayer last night. No, I thought you did. No. Oh, well, here's a double gift for you. <laughs> just take it. Just let go. Say, I surrender. <laughs> All right. There you go. Let that wind blow. No more fear for you. 
It's okay. Let that wind blow. So, Holy Spirit, blow through this room. Blow through your people right now. Let your lightning begin to strike. Let your lightnings flash. Let the Spirit of Truth bring illumination by the Spirit of Truth. Holy Spirit, let your breath come and resurrect hopes and dreams that have shipwrecked a long time ago. Give them a resurrection now. Let life come and life flow. Let the winds blow. Yes. And let their faith grow so they will know that your word to them is so. Yes. Let the winds of change blow. Yes. Bring them into a brand new flow. Bring them out of their head into their spirit. Yes. They're afraid to follow your spirit, but remove all fear and make things clear. Because that's what you're doing this year. Have fun, guys. You're going to get. A, quite a surprise because Jesus loves to surprise his beloveds. So we love you. Make mama proud and get it done. There you go, Michael Russo. Get it done, brother. By a different mother. Don't forget this mother. Brother from another. Love you. Bless you. So excited for all of you. Pick up what's going to come to you. Mantles are falling. Because that which fell into the wayside yeah. is coming back around. Amen. And what's left to be done, it's your turn to say yes and to yes. In Jesus' name. Amen.